Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and may the force be with you. I'm actually filming this video on May 4th, which is a Star Wars day if you're into that. But I use this reference because today we will learn the forces that act on the aircraft. But before we proceed to the topic, I wanted to ask you to fill out the poll here or just write me in the comments which type of videos you prefer better. When I explain with the whiteboard, as in all my older videos, or on paper, as I will explain today. So please let me know after you finish this video. Okay, so here we have an aircraft, and we just learned that there's a lift force created by the wings that is pushing the aircraft upward. Now, what other force can you think of that is always acting on the aircraft, even when it's on the ground? All right, I hope you said that it's weight. Weight or force of gravity. Ah, oh, gravity, thou art a heartless bitch. It's always acting downwards, and it always wants to bring the aircraft down. But there are more forces. In order to move forward and go from one destination to the next, you need to have a thrust or the force that pushes the aircraft forward. And thrust is created by the engines, which I'll try to draw, but I'm not sure. And there's one more force that opposes the thrust. And this force is called drag. Drag. You know, because the aircraft is not 2D, but 3D, it exists in 3D space. When the aircraft moves forward, there's, there's all these air resistance that acts on the aircraft. And we also cannot create a perfect airfoil that creates zero drag. There will always be some inefficiencies that result in drag force. And usually lift and drag go hand in hand because these are both the forces that are created by the aircraft moving forward and by the design of the airfoil. And the job of the aerospace engineer is to create such a design of the airfoil or the aircraft to maximize lift and to minimize drag. Work without increasing drag. And we will learn how to do that in one of the next videos. All right, so now recall Newton's second law. And with that in mind, try to figure out the relationships between these four forces in all of these cases. So which forces do we need to balance or which force needs to be higher in order to maintain straight level flight for the aircraft? What will be the relationship between the forces for the aircraft to speed up, the relationship between the forces for the aircraft to climb, and the relationship between the forces for the aircraft to decelerate fast on the runway after landing. And comment below with your answers to these four cases. Okay, so this is it for today's video. I hope you found it useful and now you understand Bernoulli's principle and the four forces that act on an aircraft better. Let me know in the comments down below if you found this video useful and your answers to the four cases for the forces. And I'll see you in the next video where we will describe or analyze lift and drag forces in more detail.